So this surveyor here is a signal telling us it's time to look at how plant communities are sampled and then classified. Let's talk first about how we sample communities. Here we can see two young women working on sampling herbaceous vegetation in the rocky substrate of the pine rocklands of the lower Florida Keys. Both inside exclosures, keeping key deer out, and outside. You can see there's a nail in the middle of the plot here, and she's using a U-shaped thing to describe a circular plot. So quadrats aren't always, well quadrats are square, but plots are not always square. So there are many methods used in sampling vegetation. Some are more subjective, some more objective. The relevé method depends on an experienced ecologist um, rating cover. A completely random design may be difficult to apply and sample, and you might do that and miss rare species. Probably a, a powerful way to do this is the stratified random design, where samples are located within each homogeneous region of an area. Or a complete systematic design, where a large grid is superimposed over a sample area, sampling multiple areas the same way. First, let's say a little bit more about the relevé method. Sometimes this is called the brown blanquet method, or brown blanket, some people have called it. Sometimes it's been called sigma. It all came from the Zurich Montpellier School method in Europe, and it's been used extensively throughout the world. In fact, the Forkerin lab at FIU uses it to measure density of seagrasses and diversity. For this method, you put down a plot, and then for each species present, you characterize its cover using a scale R for very rare, plus for somewhat rare, one for up to 5% cover, two up to 25%, three 50%, for 75% and 5, very rare if, if there's a uniform cover of one plant. So there are a few other scales used in vegetation ecology, the Domine Krahina and Dalben Meyers scale. Whatever scale you use, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent within your study and you know what the numbers mean. For any of those scales, you use quadrats, although I guess you could do some of those methods too, just eyeballing and estimating. But the best methods for sampling are accurate and precise, but it is kind of hard to do that well in a reasonable amount of time. The size of the quadrat depends on the items that you're measuring. Big things like trees are sampled with larger plots. And the smaller the plants, the smaller the plots are reasonable. You always need to figure out the number of quadrats to adequately sample the diversity present using species area curves like we talked about before. So in a quadrat, shown here in this rectangle, you can measure coverage of a species. And here even if the base of a plant is outside the quadrat, if its leaves cover, that you might use that in your measure of coverage. You can see here, too, things with bigger leaves have greater coverage than small plants, things with tiny leaves. Ecologists have come up with different methods for measuring cover of tree canopies using tools on the ground. One is a densitometer, which is an L-shaped tube pointing up, or a, one I like a lot is the spherical densiometer, a concave, shiny surface with a grid on it. You can see the whole canopy and count the number of squares that are covered. 
Some uh, ecologists use the diameter of the tree because the cross-sectional area of a trunk correlates with uh, canopy size. And then you can do it more precisely, taking photographs of the cam canopy with a fisheye lens and using an image analysis program. So we often use density, which is defined as the number of plants rooted in each quadrat. The abundance of plants is related to density, but density is not always proportional to cover. And you can see the same species of plant, one big individual here, three little ones here, but the amount of cover may be greater for the single individual. And frequency is important. It's of all the quadrats you sample, how often does a species occur? And usually ecologists define this as plants that are rooted in the quadrat, so that these, even though they're leaning in, would not be counted on the left. So biomass is an indication of productivity or total plant phytomass, plant biomass on a site. The term standing crop means the same thing. All are different ways of saying the weight of vegetation per unit area. So a way of measuring this is to cut the plant up, dry it, and weigh it. People usually do this with just the above ground part. It's hard to exhume the whole root system. And typically, ecologists will harvest a few individuals of each species and then make regressions of size and biomass to let them estimate biomass from DBH or canopy cover. Some sampling methods don't use quadrats. Instead, they use transects or lines a line intercept, you might just take a rope or a tape measure and measure the amount of the line covered by the different canopies. A belt transect or a strip transect is in a way kind of like a long quadrat, or you may do quadrats along a line. And then the bisects, we saw last time some profile diagrams, scale drawings within line strips can provide more detail of the morphology and the shape of the canopy and subcanopy. One method used where the plants are really tiny is the point method. A point is a quadrat of no dimensions. So in some kind of a frame, pins are put down into the ground, even like barbecue skewers or something, and the plants that they touch are recorded. If the pins touch bare ground, then there's no plant there. A method I like for getting a quick idea of diversity is to use distance methods. You can randomly or haphazardly choose individual plants and then using a compass find the nearest plant in each quarter. That is, you divide the plot into four in the directions of the compass and find the nearest plant in each quarter. You may do this along a transect line. This is called the wandering quarter method. And you can also use nearest neighbor. You can to do it to many different species or maybe with a focus on one species. Or just plants you um, select in a certain way. So this little lecture was supposed to talk about classification. I just want to say a little bit about that. Vegetation is usually classified based on either dominance, what are the two or three dominant species present, or maybe based on the entire flora using careful sampling of cover and which species are associated with which. But actually, at higher levels, there is actually an, a national vegetation classification system. And I learned about this from Dr. Mike Ross in our, our 
um, in Earth and Environment Department, one of our best vegetation ecologists in the southeast. They, just like um, taxonomy of plants themselves, vegetation types have divisions and orders, class, subclass, group, subgroup, formation, and then last of all at the bottom, alliance is most like what we know as a community.